Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today I'm going to be gel printing with stencils using my latest collection over at Stencil Girl products called Wrought Iron. Now, these stencils came about because of something that I thought about doing with my gel plate that's illegal. I mean, I never really thought I could come up with something that was illegal to do with a gel plate, but yep, turns out there is. Now, spoiler alert, I just had the thought I didn't do it. But while I was on vacation in Savannah, Georgia, I mean, they have the most incredible wrought iron, all the, the stuff, the architecture, it's magnificent down there. And I kept looking at all those beautiful gates and things and I kept thinking, oh, just some paint and a gel plate. Oh, the prints we could make with this. And seeing as how one, I don't own the house and two, they're historic homes, it's gonna be illegal for me to just grab some paint and start printing away but it did plant the seed that became these stencils. And in case you weren't sure, there are some practical advantages of using stencils compared to big pieces of wrought iron. One is the cost. Historical wrought iron costs a lot more than a single stencil. The other thing is storage and access because the ones that are on the second or third story, they're a lot harder to get to than the gates that are down on the ground. And then on top of that, if you had a bunch of them, I mean, that would take a lot of space up in your garage. And then three, and this is the one that's most important to me, is that when you're working with these as stencils, you can collage them onto the gel plate. You have a whole lot of options, and that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you in the prints that I make today. And the wrought iron collection includes the Georgian wrought iron here. It also includes cathedral wrought iron. Then there is the regal wrought iron. And finally, there is Parisian wrought iron in the collection. When you receive the stencils the very first time that you use them, you will need to cut the masks out. And all you do is use an X-Acto knife or a small pair of fine tip scissors and snip it apart in those couple little places where it's attached and then you will have them ready to use. Now, why did I do that tape around the edge? Well, I'll explain that at the end of the video, but for now, let's dive in and get to some gel printing. One of the things that I really love about these stencils, and I guess technically they'd be called masks, but whether you call it a mask, whether you call it a stencil, it still does the same thing. So I'm gonna use those interchangeably here. One of the things that I really love about this set of stencils is how much flexibility there is to them. So if I wanna use it just once, I can do that. Or if I repeat it one after the other, like I'm doing here on the gel plate, it's easy to make an entire page of pattern. I've used the same stencil here four times, and each one of those is different. When I lift this print up, I want you to notice how different each one of them is. That's one of the things I love about using a gel plate, is you get this wonderful organic variation that's in it, so that no two are ever exactly the same. Now there is still wet paint on that plate, so I'm gonna take another pull, but this time I'm just gonna pull part of it, and I'm gonna put it directly into an art journal. So you can do this on blank paper or you can do it on top of whatever you want, say like an art journal page. And it just adds a layer there. Now the rest of the paint that's on the plate, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm just gonna let it stay on the plate and I'm gonna add some more pattern to this. On that first print that I did, I pretty much used the entire mask, the entire piece of that one and repeated it four times. But this time I'm gonna repeat four times just one part of the stencil. So I'm just gonna take that crisscross X area down there and that's the only part of it that I'm gonna repeat on here. By pulling out pieces and parts, it creates a lot of design flexibility so that one single stencil can actually give you a whole lot of different looks. I'm using the 12 by 14 gel press plate here to do this simply because I wanted a bunch of space to work on. But let's say you've got an eight by 10, you absolutely can do this. You can do this on any size gel plate that you want. And the paint that I'm using, that is Amsterdam's paint. I really like how that works on the gel plate and I find it to be very economical too. And of course, I'll have all the supplies linked down below for you. Notice on this one how I didn't go over the edge of the mask. That way I didn't have a hard line on there. So it allowed me to have a little bit more of a faded out or softer look by simply keeping that brayer from going all the way to the edge. The artistry of the wrought iron in Savannah is absolutely what grabbed my attention, but I found out there was a mystery surrounding it. And that is that the quality, the craftsmanship, the artistry of it, they can't duplicate it in modern times. They can't do something that was done so incredibly well in the 17 and 1800s and match the level of quality and craftsmanship with modern day machines or modern day people. 
And this just left me more in awe of the wrought iron. Now, this is what I heard from the tour guide while we were down in Savannah. And if anyone has more facts about it, knows more about wrought iron, please let us all know in the comments because I would love to know if my tour guide was right. So with this print, I could leave it just the way it is. I mean, there's so many wonderful, great grungy things about that. Or I can add some more layers to it. And seeing as how this is just paint and paper, I'm going to live on the edge and put some more layers on here. When I'm just putting one layer on a piece of paper, I just slap the paper on wherever. But if I'm going to add multiple layers, I start thinking about where it is I want to place it. In this case, I just want to cover up the big white space that was at the bottom. So that's why I positioned it down there. Now, when I say position it, I don't want you to think that I've got, you know, GPS coordinates for exactly where it's going to be on that. I try to get in the neighborhood of where I want it. So now what I'm trying to do is just cover up the white space at the top. So as I put the paper on here, if a little bit of it touches the other part that was already on there, I say awesome because anytime your pattern overlaps, to me, it just makes it more interesting. There are three key things that you have seen in this video, and we're going to use those three things to build a more complex print. So the first thing is about isolating part of the design, like what I'm doing here. I'm just brayering over one part of it and doing that really changes the look of it. So you have a lot of flexibility to pick and isolate whichever parts of the design you like. And of course, you can put these onto a piece of paper. You can put them directly into an art journal. You can put them on a tag. You can put them on anything that you want. And here I'm just adding just little touches, adding little bits of layers as a start on an art journal page. The second key thing is to repeat. You saw me taking parts of it earlier and doing it four times to build a pattern. And then the third key thing is about building layers. So let's take those three key things and build an entire page with these patterns. I'm going to start by picking one of the masks and it really doesn't matter which one, just pick one you like and then putting some of that paint onto the plate. So now you've got some pattern so that when you put that piece of paper on there to take the first layer, you've got a starting point. And by the way, this was not carefully thought out where that was going to go on the paper. That was extremely random. It really doesn't matter where you start. Just put some pattern on there. And this is going to be a rinse and repeat kind of situation. I'm going to put one of the masks on the plate, put some paint on it, and then add another layer onto the paper. What I'm doing with this now is just finding a blank spot on the paper to put that pattern. So that's why I put it down at the bottom. As you go through and fill in any of the blank spaces on your paper, you end up creating a collage of the pieces of these patterns. For this one, I want more of a squarish kind of shape. And I say squarish because it's not like this thing is perfectly square. But that's why I only applied paint to a certain amount of that pattern so that when I added that layer, that gave me more of a square shape. As I'm adding paint onto different stencils here, I'm eyeballing about how much of it I want. I didn't measure anything. I'm just kind of eyeballing what will fit. For you, if you like to measure things, if you want to know where it's going to go precisely, then absolutely do it in the way that's most comfortable to you. For me, I like the eyeballing. I like the looseness. I like the freedom of it. And so when I'm doing this, it means I may have some areas that didn't quite go as far as I thought, like that one. I thought it would go all the way to the edge and it didn't quite. So that means I'm going to add something more there. I'm not sure what, but I'll figure it out as I'm adding these things on. Now, I was so excited playing with this one from the Regal Rod Iron that I went a little bit farther than what I needed. I really overshot how much I'd need, but there's a really easy fix for that. I've got it in position and notice how I'm just kind of holding the paper up. If you don't want paint to get on a part of it, just don't let the paper touch there. Here's a little trick that you can do when you want to isolate a very specific part of a pattern and just that. I want just those circles there. By positioning the stencil right on the edge of the gel plate, it makes it easy to simply use a little bit of the brayer because the brayer is kind of hanging over the edge so that all I'm actually getting paint on is just that skinny little strip of circles. And the reason why I needed a skinny little strip of circles is because I had a really skinny little part of white paper there that I needed to fill in. Now I say I needed to fill it in as if it was some kind of contractual obligation. 
It's not. It's just my preference. I like papers that are really busy, have lots of stuff going on. So for me, that white space, I want to fill it in. But for you, what if you want to have some of that white space? You absolutely have the freedom to do it in whichever way it calls to you. The black and white vibe was calling to me today, but you bet you can use all sorts of colors with these. And you can see some examples of where I've used colors with these stencils at the link down below. Now there are still just a few little areas of white space, so I'm just grabbing a little bits here and there until I've got this thing completely covered. But we are pretty close with this. I'm about ready to call this paper complete. Earlier in the video, I said I would talk about the masking tape that I had around the edges, so here we go. When you get your stencil, it looks kind of like this, granted it's clean, and all you do is take an X-Acto knife or a sharp pair of scissors and simply cut any of the parts where it's connected. This one actually has already been cut apart, so you'll just have to play along with me there. But once you've got it separated, then you can lift out the masks. Now what's left behind, this is essentially the packaging so that that way these could get to you so that you get all the pieces that were in the set. So they were attached in there. And this was never meant really to be used. It's very, when you take the middle out of something, it's not very sturdy. So this was never meant to be a stencil. But look at all that great pattern on there. How could I let that go? I definitely want to keep this. I want to be able to use that. So what I did is I put masking tape all around the edges. And this was simply to firm it up a little bit to make it easier for me to handle. And clearly masking tape is a little challenging for me today. So when you're doing this, just know you don't have to do it perfectly. It just needs to be functional. One of the options at this point was to simply fold the tape over itself and do it that way, but I decided I wanted to put a second piece on there so it would kind of widen out the edge a little bit. Is my way the right way to do it, the best way? Who knows? It was just the way that was calling to me today. And so I'm just gonna repeat this around all four sides. That way it's easier for me to handle it and use it as a stencil. And the reason why I need this firmness around the edge is simply because this was never meant to be a stencil. This was really just the packaging for the masks. With that big open space in there, it just has a lot more of that flop to it, and the tape helps strengthen that up. Thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've had fun building a collage of patterns on a gel plate, I'd so appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you know someone that you think would enjoy stenciling and gel printing, share this video with them so they can join in the fun too. You can find all of my stencils, including the wrought iron ones, over at stencilgirlproducts.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.